Hello and welcome to this supercharged live code. I'm Paul. And I'm Surma. So let's build an advanced router more advanced than last time. Yep, it's router part two. We're going to run your, when I say your, I mean Surma's, uh, simple HTTP2 server, are we not? I've recently put out a mini tooling tip on this. If you want to know what the features of this tool are, go there and watch that video. And you can also find it on GitHub, GitHub. Uh, in, uh, the in the Google Chrome org. org. It's, it's called, called Simple, Simple HTTP2 Server. Server. Generated a certificate, written the, the two files we need, and it's now listening on the HTTPS localhost 5000. So let's do that, localhost 5000. We need to make sure that's HTTPS. And first of all, it's going to give me an error, is it not? Yes, it is. And that is actually expected. Uh, so the thing that simple HTTP2 server does, does for you is, is it generates a TLS, TLS certificate because for HTTP2, you, you always have, have to have TLS, TLS encryption. encryption. And, and uh, uh, I generate a self-signed certificate, certificate because it's easier to do, and you can't can use something, something like Let's Encrypt for localhost. Local so, so the first time you use simple HTTP server, server, you will get this error, and you will have to click on Advanced and then proceed to tell the browser to actually find with this unsafe Let me do that. Advanced and then proceed to localhost. There we are. You see we've got a thing from last time. Oh, I don't want to go full screen. Don't do that. Let's try. Oh, let's just move it there. How is it? These things always work when I'm not doing a live stream, Surma. Right. Let's see. Let's bring up this, the dev tools. And you can see from where we were last time, OK, we had home, about, misc, and all this kind of stuff. Crucially, though, um, we have all the content in one page, and we had the Python setup that no matter which URL you hit, you always got the same HTML back, which is which kind, is of, kind a cheat, of a cheat, and, and not something not you'd, actually you'd actually do in production. production. What you're much, much more likely, likely to do in production, do production is, is want, want to have individual, individual pages, pages and then, and then load, load them in on the fly and, and do some hot swapping. So that's exactly what we're going to take today. And in fact, because of the new server, it's not set up to actually do any kind of redirect stuff. So if I refresh this page, I'm going, to, I'm going to 404 not found because, well, it actually doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. So there we go. So, and in fact, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, the root and we'll go to the settings as well. Let me just show you this because um, this is another problem that we had uh, related to our approach from last time. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We need the content settings. And then we switch off JavaScript. Um, and Which, by the way, you can also do that in DevTools. Yeah, 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 but this is m more fun for me right now. Because okay. I was like, where is that thing hidden? <laughs> where is it? I'm going to go and find it. Um, but uh, in fact, speaking of DevTools, let's make that bigger as well. because we're oh, yeah, gonna do that. I forgot my only job. <laughs> Keep Paul making things bigger. Um, so now if we, we refresh the page, because the router doesn't actually kick in, no JavaScript, We've got, we've this, got problem, this problem, okay? okay. So, the, so content the content is actually, actually there. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's in the it's page. But it's just not being shown, shown because we are completely we're relying, relying on JavaScript. JavaScript. Yeah, all yeah, our views are set to hidden by default. default. Okay. okay, so we've got so a bunch of things that I think we can try and fix in the time that we have. And hopefully, we'll introduce our customary one bug per episode. It's even on the bubble. It's even It's becoming a thing. It's not even supposed to be a thing. It's just becoming a thing. I think it's in the script for this week as well. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, right. Good. good. So, so let's, uh, for now, I'm going to switch JavaScript back on. Which because was, we do kind of need it. Like, it, is, it is hard doing web apps without JavaScript. It is, but we can make this work. So what we'll actually do, I think, so let's just check we're back as where we were with the deep links not working. All right, I'm going to close the things that I don't need. I was having fun with ESLint earlier. It wasn't working for me. Goodness knows why. Anyway. This is where we are, so let's go back, refresh, and we are in a good spot. Now, again, in the kind of server-side world, you'd probably do this with templating and stuff. Uh, for ease, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to create uh, an About section, which is going to be there, a Contact section, which is decided to put up there for no apparent reason. Let's move that back out. And so basically, all the routes that we were emulating in the last version, yes. we are now actually going to create with the same content, or almost the same sort of content in all the index.html files. Right, and what we need to do, let's in fact, let's go to the index.html file, and a bunch of things. So since we're going to, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and copy the stuff across uh, that we have, and we're going to try and move that around a little bit. So let's move this, I think, to a defer source equals static app.js. Because each of the pages is going to need to do the same kind of thing, so they may as well share this file. So let's just do that, app.js. And we can just do js. We'll do app, and we'll do that. 
Come on. There you go. Come on. The good old app class. Wow, why is that why is that not in Okay. Stop it. Bad bad editing. There we go. Okay. In editing is hard. I know. Uh, so that's gonna hopefully solve that particular problem. Now what we'll do, let's see. Yeah, we sort of kind of need a copy of this page everywhere. So let's do that. In fact, let's do. Is that going to work? Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, why not? All right, let's copy that across. Index to about. Into the contact. And into misc. Right, let's see what happens with that. So now we should, in theory, still work. And if we, if we refresh, we're actually got pages to power that section now. So that's good. But it will still work as it was before. So we're kind of, we just basically, instead of doing the server side stuff, we've just done it for real. We've actually got yeah. the files generated. So this is something they could actually do on any kind of static host where you don't have any logic on the back end, like GitHub pages or Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3. All these kind of things work with this approach mm, because you don't need any server side logic. Make out those files. Right. Um, other thing that we can do, actually, is inside of, say, our main index, we know that uh, because of the, where it is, we can actually say that this one is visible by default, which is the class that we added when a section becomes visible. So which was totally dependent on the URL that you were yeah. opening up. Uh, uh, so in, so in the about, the about well, that's well, also going to be, be that's, that's the one that's visible. visible. So we're kind so of, kind of uh, uh, short shortcutting the, the, the JavaScript. JavaScript, JavaScript still, still, stuff will still, still kick, kick in, in. But if, but if it, it didn't, didn't, I should I check that this works. works. MISC. MISC. Um, la, la, la. There we go. OK, so each one of these sections we've defaulted. And let's say in the app, let's say we don't actually hijack uh, the links anymore. And the router does kick in by itself when it gets attached. You can see it does all this stuff. So if we just do a return here, so now we've kind of switched off the JavaScript just by adding the a router is things. now just an M, like a knob. It doesn't yeah, do anything. Exactly. So, so the links are back to being actual links. Yeah, you can see now we're. This is actually the progressive enhancement way here, right? This is this is a bunch of links that take you between pages. So this, so is, this actually is actually kind, kind of where, where we should have been, been starting. Uh, we've, uh, been we've been able to, able to kind of retrofit, retrofit this back, back in pretty quickly. quickly. So that's so a good that's sort, of sort of starting, starting point. point. Now we can now actually we can enhance, enhance on top. top. And the and way we can enhance on top is, of course, just bring back our router. We can bring back our, let me see, in app.js, we can bring back the link, like so, and hopefully. And our animations are back. That's good. Now, the problem is we've kind of still got per page whether you say you misc or whatever, we've got the same content inside each page, right? I don't think we want to do that. I so basically, when you're lo going loading the miscellaneous page, you still load the content for all the other pages, even right. though they're not on screen. I mean, in this point, it's just a word, right? It's home and about and content. But I mean, in the real app, that's going to be images. It's going to be a lot of potential, a lot of content that even you, more JavaScript potentially. Yeah, and styles and, styles and, 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 all, and all that, that kind, kind of stuff. stuff. So, so you've, we've, we've got to be a little, little bit more, more tactical, tactical about, about that, that here. Yeah, so we don't so really we don't want, want the exact, exact copy of the page each time. time. Now this now, is this the point is where we can actually make some tactical decisions because. We can, we can either, either take, take our, our view, view from, from last, last time, time and extend, and extend it, it and make and a new class called something like remote view. view. Yeah. yeah, right. Which is which is what you and I do. Yeah, this is what you and I. So, so kind of after, after last, last time and before, before this time, time Sam and I have been talking about this. We could do that, which feels like a good thing, and it feels like you could just basically override the in method. Let me show you the in method in the router in the view. Sorry, in the view. This here, it feels like you could. Um, override this in your inherited class and just say, you know, in uh, for the remote view must do something magical and special. Okay, you could yeah. do that, right? It's cool. But let's say, for example, further down the line, you, you want, want to, to have, have something, something specifically, specifically for the about, the about section. section. You don't, you know, don't know whether it's going to be the SC view or the SC remote, remote view ahead, ahead of time. time. In, in fact, it's probably going to be both because. On the about page, it'll be the SC view, but on every other page, it'll be a remote view because it needs to be loaded in remotely. Yeah. Uh, this means you've got an inheritance problem, um, which composition would actually help you with because you could kind of borrow bits and pieces. In this case, I think the alternative is probably, probably better, better, which would, which would be, be to add an attribute. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, think I think on, on, on second, second thought, thought, you really want to be able to add, add special, special behavior at one point. point so, and dual, and dual inheritance, inheritance is not a thing, thing or like, or like multiple, multiple inheritance, inheritance. No, 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 is not a thing in JavaScript. So, and generally, it is something that is really hard to keep track of in your head. So, it's best to avoid it usually. And I think the attribute makes it very obvious 
anyway, so it's probably, probably the better approach in terms of like lean design. design. Right. right. So what I'm going to so do is basically what I'm doing is I'm, doing is I'm sort of stripping, stripping back, back uh, these, these, uh, these these other views that don't apply, apply to this page, this page uh, and make, make them, them into, into uh, kind of placeholder, I suppose, views. Yeah. So we know where they would live on the page. And I will tell you what I'll do. So it's inside each one of these. Do -do -do. I'll add a remote. Oh, we don't want that on the home. So that for the home, the home is actually kind of included in the, this page because this is the um, the root page. By the way, this is what people mean kind of when they talk about server-side rendering, that the document you receive on a first request contains all the data you need to show what the user has been requesting. Yeah. And everything that, you, that they don't need is stripped out and can be loaded on demand. So we're kind of emulating that by maintaining multiple versions of the same index HTML document yeah. and putting the data in there or stripping it out. Yeah. So we got th so that's going to work here. This is going to be a little bit, um, I'll tell you what we'll do, is we will just go ahead, grab this. And in case you've just joined, welcome. Hi. This is Supercharged Live. And people have requested, and now we're doing it. It's Router Part 2. We are going to enhance the router from the last episode. Uh, with new capabilities like loading in the data from remote endpoints and not having everything in one document, which was our approach for the last week. Uh, if you want to participate, if you want to confuse us or uh, influence the way things are going, go into the chat on YouTube and send us your questions or your remarks. Uh, I'll be monitoring it and incorporate it into our actual conversation if it makes sense. Yeah. Because sometimes it doesn't, and I will not do it. Speak <laughs> Speaking of which, are there any questions or are there any comments? on the chat while I'm doing the fairly boring work of just hard coding in well, some stuff. Well, we got asked why you switched from um, Atom to VS Code. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we're mixing it up. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, historically, I've used Sublime. Um, and to be honest, I'm, I have a fairly lightweight set of plugins that I kind of keep per editor. Mainly, linting is one of them. Um, and normally just a little bit of syntax highlighting and editor config stuff. Other well, you're talking the plugin. Most editors have that just built in yeah, at and, this point. And, so, uh, so, and to be honest, it's And the rest of it is you want to type keys, and you want those letters to appear on the screen. And all these editors are really good at that. Yeah, and I actually quite like, one of the things I like about the VS Code is the, uh, the code completion stuff that it starts to suggest. It's really good at that, yeah. So I, it just feels like, you know, I forget sometimes when I'm doing uh, XHR and things like that, what order the parameters go in. And that is one of the biggest problems with XHR. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just like, painful. Oh, is, am I doing an open right now? Am I doing a send? I don't know. So anyway, um, right. let me finish this last one up. So that each one of, whoa, yeah, each one of these now. So if you like, look at the about, basically the, the, the about view is going to be in line. In line, yeah. And everything else is remote. And the same for contact, and the same for misc. And then the same for the root is going to be home. Let me just remove that. And make yeah, it make the, same. the formatting consistent. Why not? OK, so now you can see that we've basically got the same kind of stuff everywhere. And hopefully, uh, that's still going to work. There's no reason to think it wouldn't, except that what we're going to sh probably see that is that when we go to a section, it's just going to be blank. Because there there's, is no, no content. Uh, there's no content in there. But it still sort of fundamentally works. Um, so the, the, the visible attribute is still being switched to the correct view. But since there is no content, because we just stripped it and yeah. haven't implemented loading it in, yes. there is no content. But we're, we're making progress so far. We're, we're doing well. Now, one of the things I think we can assume then is if you've got one of these remote views, we probably need to add some kind of loady spinner behavioral thing. Um, and I have sort of guessed ahead of time that that's what we're going to need. So I've created myself a little spinner graphic there. Lovely. It is so pretty. It's it's just, you know what? The thing is, I kind of am looking forward to uh, conical gradients. Because yes. finally we could do these things with CSS, CSS. Where you just be like, start at transparent white, go all the way around to full white, or whatever the color is that you need, and then ta-da, be done. Because right um, now this is an image. It might look bad on retina screens. I've made it twice as big as I need so that I can so I that can means at least, you're at least two extra pixel on non-retina devices. All right, all right. I'm just saying, I'm just oh, saying. Fine. I'm just saying the CSS approach would be awesome if it was here already. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Right, let's uh, carry on. <laughs> uh, right, so what do we need to do this? We need to do this in remote the, attribute. Yeah, we do. Right? We've got the remote attribute. You're right. But uh, let's do this here. Yeah, so if we've got a remote view, so we've got SC view. And if it's an SC view that's remote, 
So we can do that with the attribute. Um, and a we'll, very underused feature of CSS, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. Um, what we'll do is, so I'm going to put on the spinner, and I'll, I'll use an after for that, uh, which is going to be fine. Let me just see. So I need to say its width is, so the, the image is 80 by 80. So it's going to be height 40 by 40. All and right. we say background URL, oh, background URL, URL. There we go. Uh, images, spinner, dot ping, ping, center. Because transparency, center, no transparency. Repeat. And then we say background cover contain. So it fits inside that. I mean, you could do 40, let's do that. 40 pixels, 40 pixels. All right, so we do that. Uh, background cover, it doesn't know that, is it? Is it background cover? Background, background size. size. Oh, yeah. Paul, Paul, come on, because it's cover contain. <sighs> right, so with blah, 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 blah. And it's an after, so we need to do content that. And we can do uh, position fixed. I, I, one of my dearest yeah. wishes for CSS is that we don't need to specify an empty content for pseudo elements. <laughs> it just feels yeah. so unnecessary. Transform. So it's going to be 50 50, which will put it down to the middle, but off to the side. So we'll just do trans, transform with a translate of minus 50%, minus 50%, which is one of my favorite things because of the fact that it accounts for the actual width of the item being translated. Rather and not than paradigm. Yeah, it's one Which of the when you times. when you read this, it looks very confusing if you don't know this very detail. Yeah. It's uh, and we also take what we need. We need some keyframes. Keyframes spin, and we we'll say it's from to, and we're going to do a uh, transform rotate zero degrees zero. No, it's not. You do it like that, don't you? Zero yeah. degrees to transform, rotate 360 degrees, like so. So will that invalidate the translate transform? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Um, probably will do. So we'll probably need to just put it in there as well, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens. So we can do that. And since it's gonna, we're going to have this on the whole time anyway, let's do animation name, spin, animation duration, one second. Animation timing function linear, and then what's the what's the repeat count? Can you remember animation iteration count? Thanks, mate. Infinite. One of my favorite CSS attributes because it's so long and unwieldy. Uh, yeah, animation iteration count. At least, as I say, at least modern editors are uh, really good at kind of going. You mean that thing, right? Yeah, and and, and it's not all sort of. In your, I used to be a big proponent head. of not having code completion because I was very proud of knowing everything oh, from the top man. of my head. No. I, I've since learned. <laughs> I've since learned that there is more important skills to have. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So we've got this in the remote. So hopefully um, we can go to an about, and then we go here. Why are we ah? Uh, wait. This is saying home. Oh, okay. We've got a bug. Um, Already. Yeah, because the visible attribute needs to go against the uh, the active one. Oh yeah, so that 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 is actually correct. So again, this would be something. See, I'm error prone because um, I'm doing this by hand. Uh, for a you would use like a templating engine exactly, or a static like, side generator or something like that. It should be like the the current section should be the one that's that's visible. So now all being well, there we go. So immediately we get this kind of spinner in the middle, which is a kind of a good default assumption for the remote views that we're going to load them. So we may as well chuck up a spinner. But we're going to have to be probably, I think, a little bit more tactical in the future. Uh, because what's going to happen is some network requests might come back instantly. And that's going to make this look really horrible. But let's If we have a server worker or good caching, we might get it instantly and have like a one or two frame flash of the spinner, yeah, exactly. which looks weird. Yeah. So well, let's, but let's work our way through uh, the problems as we get them. Um, Mm -mm. Right, our SC view. The in, well, we definitely know we want to fade in. Um, what we want to do is we want to say, um, uh, let's see. Mm, OK, so let we, let's do the, we want to know if this is a. Attribute uh, remote is not equal to null because. The, uh, the empty one will just come back as an empty string when we get that attribute, so it's not all equal right. to null. Um, mm -mm -mm. 
Okay, so if, it, if it's a remote, uh, we would want to load the view, right? So that's fine. So because we know we're going to th throw the spinner on, so we need to load the view, and when that load is, load's done, we'll then put the content in, and we should be good. So let's see what load view would have to look like. Load view. <coughs> okay, so that's going to be... I'm going to do an XML HTTP request. And people might be wondering, why is he not doing a fetch? And the reason is, um, fetch doesn't let you get a document. And uh, that is effectively what we're doing. We're going to get a document and rip parts of it out. So we want to be able to do queries yes, on we the document. Be able to query it. The alternative is to get would be to do a fetch and get it back as text, and then pass it to the DOM parser, which is like DOM parser, blah, blah, blah. But the weird thing about the DOM parser is it doesn't throw an error if it fails to parse the DOM. It doesn't? No, it creates you a new document anyway with a, with a parser error or parse error node inside it. That sounds fun. That sounds ridiculous. Let's, let's not do that. So XHR, let's say we'll say. We oh, were just mode. talking about it. Now we get to write XH, XHR. I haven't mm. done that in ages. Yay. And I so, already want to cry. So XHR response type, we know we want that to be document. Wait, we want it to be document. There you go. So we want that to be that, xhr.open. What does it you need? It needs a method, so that'll be get the URL. Hmm. The fact that you know all this is already. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. OK, so I know what we're going to do. We need to know which URL we're going to load. And the, the data that gets passed in from the router, if we look back here, um, the data is the root itself executed against the regular expression. So the zeroth You mean part the regular expression executed against the path? Yes. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, the zeroth entry in that data array will be the full path, which is actually the thing that the user tried to click on. So that's good. Okay. So this is, and we can use it as the actual path because that is what we have all these index HTML yeah. stuff in just. Yeah. Doc, we're looking for query selector select the thing. tor, and we want an SC view which is set to visible, right? Which is what we mainly said in the in it all comes together. Oh. Yeah, it does. Uh, so the new doc is that new doc query selector, the visible one uh, and that is going to be our view. So const new view is that, um, and then with new view child nodes. For each for each child node, what do we want to do? Oh, I tell you what we'll do. We'll say this dot view equals null, uh, and then we'll say this dot view equals new document fragment. I'm going to create a new document fragment for it, uh, and then we'll say doop, append child node. So we've created a new document fragment. We're going to uh, take a copy of the SC views children, put them into the document fragment, and then we can say this dot append child uh, this dot view. Okay. So that will uh, throw that onto there. It will append that into the view. Yeah. It means we don't carry the copy of the SC view. We're taking its children, copy them in. And append right. it to the document. Am I missing anything? I'm wondering. Similar? I'm wondering if this function should return a promise. Why? No, no, no. It shouldn't because we don't want to block the transition on this. I was okay. wondering if you want to, if you if there should be a way to subscribe to I'm done loading. I mean, you could. You could, but if you don't need it, then don't. I'm just was wondering if we're gonna need it later on but or not. We might do. Um, for now, I'm just gonna assume that what we want to do is we just want to load it, and when we load it, we're just gonna pop the content straight into the view. Now, I think we do have a bit of a. a we're gonna have to do a bit of sleight of hand here, um, because what's gonna happen? Oh, was, let's see if it works first of all. Console. I'm so scared. Oh. This is actually better than expected. Yeah, but we still got the spinner, right? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, ship, we'll ship it. Done. <laughs> 
Um, your your simple HTTP server actually has a feature that um, is extremely useful at this particular point because. Um, Coincidentally, I just shipped it yesterday. Weirdly, I wonder why. Huh? Um, you can add a delay onto a, a request. So let's say it's not going to come in instantly because this is lo loading off localhost, right? So, so it's like snappy snap. Yeah. Which is not how the real world works. Yeah. So say you're on the about section and you go to the contact section. Um, basically, what we've got at the moment is we swap to that view, but there's no content loaded in, so we just show you this spinner essentially, um, which we coded in inside the CSS, which you can see. Roughly speaking, over here, we basically said, if there's a remote attribute on the view, throw on the spinner, and so on. Now, in our code, inside the view code, what we've got is basically this is the uh, in on the view that existed before. The old code. code. And we're saying, if this is a remote view, uh, we want to load its contents in, which you can see what we're doing is we're making an XHR uh, in for that. And we can just quickly recap the discussion we had. The reason we're not using fetch is because fetch doesn't let you fetch as a document. You can do JSON, you can do text, you can do blob, blob, yes, but you can't say uh, dot document. Um, the reason is that the fetch spec would then have to involve uh, DOM parsing, um, which would be just massive. So which is also not available in workers, but fetch is. There you go. So um, and you want to have a document because we want to be able to call. Query selector, for example. So what we do is, uh, you can see here, we've got the XML HTTP request. Um, we tell it that we want a document back. We get the the link that the the, the router got. So basically, we're going to load that over XHR, and then uh, when it comes in, we just basically grab it as the doc. We look inside it for whichever one of the visible views is in that doc. Uh, then we created ourselves a document fragment, and then we take the, a copy, or we actually reassign essentially. Um, the, the the children of the view, the loaded in view, and put that into the fragment, and then we put the fragment into the page, uh, which is all going to work out just dandy. It was working just fine. And in fact, the other thing we've just done is we've added this delay property onto uh, the request, which is uh, something that uh, Simple HTTP2 server supports, uh, basically to slow, to delay the response, um, such that we will now get, for example, going from contact to about, we see that one, two, three, four, five. Any moment now. Any moment or now. Not. Any moment. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's broken. Oh, dear. Paul, I need to save that. That's why. Let's do that again then. Go from about to contact. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. That was were long seconds, though, for they some reason. Fell, long, fell long. long. Fell long. Everything feels longer when you're on Probably. Live but as you can see, this is very similar to how the real world, world would work, where you are on the tube, very brittle, very flaky connection. Yeah. Requests take a while to get out and back in. Yeah, so um, it helps us to actually have this delay on just to kind of see that our, you know, our spinner is going to show up and do the right thing. And uh, in fact, the contents arrived and it just popped in, which for a real view would not be that nice. No. Um, and in fact, our spinner is still going. So we need to kind of account for that. So what we'll do is we will say, um, class. yeah, let's do let's do a. Um, so we've got the view. We'll append it, and we'll say like this dot. Hide spinner, and in the hide spinner, let's do this dot class list dot add. Load it. Yeah. Why not? Um, kind of while I'm here, actually, this makes a point um, that we, if every time we call in, we're going to load the view, which is unnecessary, right? Because we we only need to load it once. We only need to load it once, and we can use the fact that the, this dot view has been turned into this document fragment as the kind of marker for that. So we say, if it's remote and we don't have a view, load it. Otherwise, once we've been through this process once, the view will be set, yeah. and we can. So it means when we go to all the subsections, in the end, we're going to have the same DOM as we had in, in the, the last week's episode. Exactly. Uh, last so just, episode. Exactly. So we just kind of, it's a little more progressive enhancement friendly, I suppose. OK, so we've added this loaded class. And what the loaded class needs to do is let's do SC view a remote one with a loaded class and we need to tell the after that its opacity is zero in which case what we'll do is we'll put a, an opacity of one and we'll take what we'll do is we'll also make pointer events pointer events non here and we will so tell me Paul why not just display none uh, well we could we absolutely could but I think we want this kind of we want a kind of crossfade effect that's all I'm going for you could just snap it off. Um, and that would also be 
totally okay. But in general, like these hard transitions or these non-existent transitions is what you would want to avoid. I, I personally want to avoid leave it. the user. Yeah, it feels nicer to, to just kind of crossfade. So we'll actually do a transition on opacity uh, for like 0.3 seconds, and then shh, why not? Ooh, they, look at this! They've got some built-in wow. ones. Uh, whatever. You know the one. I know you know it. I know no. I want to type it out just no to show point. up. No, no. Oh. oh, I can't remember it. Oh, I triggered the. You did. Oh, is it 0.3? Oh, what do I do? What do I normally do? Oh, panic, panic, panic. Whatever. Didn't, shouldn't we have the transitions on one of the other things? The, Why? The lead in, lead out transition should have the same. <laughs> oh, dude. No, I. Just don't, don't, don't we have the same ease function on our lead in, lead out transition? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's copy paste. No, no, no point three. Okay, let's do that. Well done, Come well, on, Paul. Well done, Sama. Don't panic, Paul. Don't panic. It's fine. It's you were almost right. I was almost right. No, 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 no point three one. That seems odd, Paul. That seems like an odd one. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we do um, an opacity of one. Let me check that to an opacity of zero when it's loaded. So let's see how we're doing there. So we go from contact. To about oh this is gonna be a five second wait I might You're just I might tune just, it down a little yeah because otherwise but it disappeared it faded out it but really the content out. still snaps in right and so I think what we probably want to do is we want to have so I could make this after full size kind of screen and then kind of rotate that but that's just a massive layer to yeah. to do that with so what I'll do is I'm gonna do this I'm gonna have a before like this and then I'm gonna set Oh, you're going to basically put something over the content. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Because we can fade Go. in the content. We could. We could fade in the content. But you'd have to put the content inside another element and then fade that in. It's often because we have the background color. Exactly. Oh, it's it's yeah. often easier to put something over the top of that and fade that out than it is to try and get all the content Which and fade visually, that in. Which visually is indistinguishable. Yeah, exactly. Often it is. Um, yeah. And certainly, it's a, it's a, can be a, a, a faster way to get the same effect. So position fixed. Which one am I going to do today? Top zero. Left zero. What's next? And right zero. <laughs> Bottom gotcha. zero. OK. And um, we'll do background. Let's just make that uh, one, two, three, one, two, three for now. Uh, and let's see what we get. So position fixed. Da, 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 da. That seems good. Um, so we need to make sure that when it's loaded, uh, the before fades out as well. So we go from there to contact. Oh, I should really drop that delay. <laughs> I wanted to remind you already if I got because I was checking. But the I don't chat. see it before, which is not clever. Oh, it's probably because I've not done things like content. See, I told you. <laughs> you can do this yeah. 20 times a day and you still forget about it. Yeah. And also, um, it will need to be like oh, opacity yeah. one. And it'll need to have a thing with the thing there with the opacity transition. There we go. Um, so let's see. Is that good? Right, I'm going to drop that delay while I remember, because every time I'm like, I should drop that delay, and then I f keep forgetting. Um, let's drop it to two seconds. OK. So that. So that's cool. Um, obviously, this is always the same color. In this case, we can totally cheat, um, because we can make it inherit the background color, right? Also, uh, feature of cheat edit is not kind of underused. I never, ever remember. So background. But this is actually one of the most legit use cases I've ever seen for this. Background inherit means that it's going to take the the sort of green color here. Of the parent, um, which the studio element is a child. Yeah. Or is it? It is, right? It is a yeah, child. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Ta -da. So you see now, well, actually, once we go between sections, once we've loaded them once, it's fast. It's snappy. Yeah, because it doesn't need to load them in again. It's kind of it's kind of cached it for next time. And uh, in case you're wondering, um, one of the things that we added last time uh, inside this was uh, contain strict, which I'm on, I'm on the stable version of Chrome here. Um, but in Canary, uh, as of Chrome 52, Chrome 52 actually, oh. Chrome 52, uh, CSS containment landed in Chrome, which would mean that we can toggle things like visibility uh, and hopefully limit the uh, effects of things like layout and so on. It depends generally on where you actually uh, place the containment. Um, I mean, for this prototype, it wouldn't have any real gain because no. we only have a single word in each view. Yeah, it's but tiny. if you have more complex, maybe even scrolling content and where layout m gets more and more expensive the more elements you have, this might be a lighter because if we add something in one view, 
without containment, all the other views that aren't even you might get relayouted, and you don't yes. want that. And this is yeah, exactly we don't want that. So um, anyway, right now, if we remove um, the situation where we've got, or we got, we have a really short. Let's have a look. Uh, see view. This is in view. Yeah. If we get rid of the delay or we'll put it down to something really small, like that. Um, I don't think it's too short. No, you can see. Oh, it. you can actually see it because yeah. of the fade out. So if you look really carefully, when I'm switching between sections, you can see that there's this kind of that you can see the spinner, and then it kind of disappears immediately, and that's kind of weird uh, and not very nice. So what we'll do—it's one of the things that you probably can't unsee once you have seen it. You might not notice it at first. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's just let's really sell that effect. So we go about bleh, contact bleh, disk bleh, <laughs> every time. Bleh. Let's 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 not make our users feel that way. Yeah, let's not do that. So what we'll do instead of just assuming that we need to show the spinner, what we'll do is we'll make that uh, need, require a class, and we'll say that class is pending. So the section is is pending, like so. Um, and then what we can do is in a here, what we'll do is yeah, if we've gone into the load view, that will be the time to say if this load if this XHR is going to take a long time. Let's you know pop up this uh, this pending class. So yeah. what we'll do is we'll say set timeout, and we'll do uh, this dot show spinner, uh, and we'll wait say half se a second. Half a second. Yeah. I mean, and I guess you you'd get a feel for this depending on your app as to how long you want to wait. Um, and the show spinner is gonna uh, it's gonna add a class of pending. I'll add a pending class, and then what we'll need to do. I'll tell you what we'll do. This dot uh, spinner timeout equals that, and let's woo, do that equals uh, equals undefined. And the reason you don't want to set to something like zero is the fact that the first timeout that you get will actually be set to zero yeah. anyway. So uh, the specs that it should because be because we want to cancel. The spinner, obviously, when the yes. page was loaded so before the, that timeout. When the when the onload fires, we'll clear, we'll clear a timeout for that, and we will this dot. Well, we're already calling this dot hide spinner. You actually, don't even for need that. it on as a class variable, do you? Uh, yeah, potentially, potentially. Well, it refactors more easily this way, probably because you can move things to different functions without worrying about losing the reference. Yeah, but I mean, tell you, tell you what we're also going to do. We're going to move that out here because, in the event that we on the XHR loading is when we actually create the view, but for safety we only want this to fire once the load view that is, is true. Fired, so we want to create that. Maybe view. someone does a double click or something yeah. weird happens. Exactly. So we'll move that out there while we're looking at this particular bit of code. Okay. So we clear the spinner timeout and we'll call hide spin. But you're right. We could actually probably just do a const there. Ooh, const. There we are. Spinner timeout. Is that, and we're just gonna we're gonna clear it. We no longer need it. Oop, let's do that. There we are. So that if if we're pending this and it comes in and say 250 milliseconds, then we clear that timeout and we're gonna hide the spinner anyway, which will involve adding this loaded class. But we can tell you what we'll do as well in here. The dot loaded actually we should just kind of compound that, arguably like so. Um, yeah, should do it. See what happens. So we so when it's a short delay like this, that's great. Let's have a. We don't have the uncanny spinner flash exactly. on load anymore, which is one of the things we wanted to achieve. I have a I have an even better idea though, uh, because I think what's going to happen is let's do, let's just make an artificial delay const delay equals math dot random, woo times by five thousand. We'll round that down by doing that, which is. You bit hacker. I know. It's weird, isn't it? Math floor is just too mainstream. I know. I'll tell you what, I'll do it. I'll do math floor. Because <laughs> that was just a bit showboaty. There was no need to do that, Paul. Math dot floor. Idiot. Ah, there we go. There we go. Delay. Um, yep, yep, yep. Right. So in this case, when we go to a section. Hmm. We didn't see anything. Don't see it. OK. So we've, we have a problem. We have a bug. Did did the pending class ever? Did I actually 
shows me now this dot class list dot add pending. This is this isn't this set time up. Mm. Oh, okay, there we go. I didn't actually call that function. Any questions on the live stream? Any? Uh, so we got two questions right now. The first question was, what was the split hack right now? What was the single pipe and why did it work? The single pipe uh, is going to be it's a bitwise operation and your bitwise oring with zero, which basically converts it to the nearest integer value, is the because is bitwise the operations only work at least on, on integers, yeah. so it implicitly turns a float into an integer, which basically means cutting off the decimal places. So it works, uh, which in this case for a delay feels like something I might want to do. I want to see milliseconds. I want a, a rounded value. I don't want to do 342.7 milliseconds. Also, interesting question. Uh, he said yeah. he wouldn't use set timeout, but rather put a delay on the CSS trans animation for the spinner, which in this case, I agree, that would work. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you are more complicated than just an animation. Sometimes you're actually doing work in the background, or you maybe want to do some other logic, yeah, um, which actually involves JavaScript, and then you have to do something like it's a timeout to invoke the actual code. Yeah, you, exactly. There's a, there is always a balancing act here. You definitely can do that. And um, I, in this particular situation, I think uh, my preference is for the readability of going, ah, oh, OK, uh, we've, we've kind of we've got a timeout for the spinner. Like, and it, it follows in the flow of this particular code. If you have to jump across to the CSS to see that, you have to know that that's in the code to in order to go and go. Why is that spinner not showing up immediately? Like for example, the class is there. What? What? Why? And so for me personally, just seeing it here is uh, yeah. Having basically usually with classes, you associate the state, and if that state is delayed because of mm. CSS animation, it just feels weird. Yeah. Uh, but I get your point. It would be leaner totally if you can right. if you can achieve a goal with this. This probably is just a way that scales better because we at some point we might want to add some logic to when things are being delayed. Yeah, so in, this is now working. So we've go to the contact section, but it pops in. You see how the dink? And so and I and that's because the, oh, the pending class creates the after at that particular point. So we kind of want to do uh, Yet another rule. Yeah, yet another rule. It is if we didn't have enough of those already, uh, with an opacity of one, like so. And the same will be true for the. But before. the original, you want opacity zero, right? Because. Yeah, you're right. We want the opacity to be zero here. And then when the pending class shows up, like so, let's do before. We want to set the opacity to one, and when it's pending loaded. I mean, I, I imagine we, because this appears after. Let's find out. Just removing. Yeah, because at the same time we don't. Need, well, we could remove the pending class actually. Yeah, I was about to say just removing pending yeah. should be enough. That should be enough, right? Okay, let's do that then. Uh, back in the view, we'll do that. Remove pending. It's no longer pending. Contact. I, I, I kind of feel we broke everything just now. Yeah, we did. Why? What did? No, it? I think it was just fast enough to load because our delay is random now. Ah. Or it's in. No, it's got it's got it's got an error. I've got an error. Class oh. not, not remote. Ta -da. Not gonna do that. Remove. There we go. <laughs> remote classes. Upcoming <sighs> feature. <Yeah. laughs> I'll tell you what I want to do, just it, without delay, I actually want to say at least one second. Oh yeah, that's good. And then contact. See how it faded in? It's a little bit nicer. And then eventually nice. the content's gonna and show. Actually, oh, it's so beautiful. There you go. And then and then we're up to six seconds now, right? Up so. to six seconds, which in hindsight was a bit of a mistake. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Right. Um, this is now working as intended. If there are no other, no other questions, no, no I think no. we're good. In which case, let me say thank you to everybody who's joined us on the live stream asking the questions. Uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, don't forget that you can subscribe to the the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Chrome Developers. And uh, we'll do a TLDW for this as well. So anybody who's not been able to spend this time with us today will be able to watch that. And that's awesome. Uh, and we will catch you next time. See you.